Welcome to St. Andrews United Methodist Church, uh, Virginia Beach. My name is Pastor Witt. This is our KISS service, keeping it shorter and simpler service. It doesn't have music and children's message and things that the traditional service has. If you want to watch that one, worship with that, that's also available online. Um, it's been a, a busy week. Um, we've had a lot of things going on. And I um, want to let you know that Leela Oakley will be leaving us as our youth and children's leader this week. And uh, we're going to miss her. She's done a great job. Hope you pray for her and keep her future in your prayers. Many people, as I said, having a difficult week. Uh, some, some tough things. Um, so I hope, I hope you're taking care of each other. I hope you're praying for each other. I uh, hope you're keeping up with your neighbors. That you know, Just doing the things that you do that Christ calls you to do into whatever ministry it is that, that Christ calls you into. Thank you for your financial support. Uh, if you would like to, to give us a gift, uh, tithe, sacrifice, offering, uh, you may do so in one of three ways. You can mail it to us at 717 Tucson Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23462. You can go on the website and do it, or you can drive it by and drop it up uh, in the box by the front door. We are doing in-person worship. Uh, you'll need to register. You'll, there are some different things that, that you need to do in order to come. We have limited space. So uh, please consider carefully whether you should be in worship or not um, if you, in person, if you, uh, if you plan to come. And so um, I think that's about all I have before we begin our worship. Let us take a couple moments to center ourselves on Christ. Amen. God so loved the world that God gave God's self in human form. And what we call the Son. So that whosoever should believe in God would not perish but have life everlasting. It's great news. To join me in our invocation, our opening prayer. Enable us to receive from you, O Lord, and to share with you that we may become more of what you desire for us. And may we receive enough to become more of what you need from us as we're regenerated into what you would love for us to be, that we may bring your kingdom. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning is continuation uh, of working our way through Exodus. And so, if you have a Bible and, and you want to pull it up, you may do so. Exodus 17. Here now a reading of the scripture of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of Israel journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They came to Raphidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. And the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted for their water. And the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Go ahead of the people. Take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of all the, Israel, the elders of Israel. 
And he called the place Masha and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The written word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week I said to you at the opening of the sermon that, that we needed to keep in mind uh, several things. And I say to you that we still need to keep those things in mind because we have been talking for four weeks about four pieces of Scripture. We talked about the Passover where the oppression ends. We talked about the passing through the water where the fear of them being up against the water and then it opening and they're, they're passing through. Uh, is taking care of. The feeding begins. We talked about the hunger last week with the manna and the squab. This week we're going to talk about the watering begins, the, the end of thirst. And I said last week, and, and I think if you read Exodus, you'll get the same feeling that, that things just seem to be getting worse as far as provisions go and as far as feeling like you can stand up and do your own thing. But on the other side, it should be becoming very evident that God is with them and that God is in the midst of trying to make their lives better. Another thing that we need to keep in mind is that it's been a very short period of time since they've been freed from the oppression and the slavery of 400 years. It's been a little over a month, which is not very long to be a freed people. Also, they're homeless, they're living in tents, they're traveling through a desert. And I think something that we need to keep in mind is that they are moving in stages. They have this promise for the future, but they're moving in stages. It's not as though they're just simply going. I remember riding with my father and mother in the car when I was a kid and dad had this high proclivity for for never taking the straight trip if we if he knew that there was another beautiful way to go through the the wilderness to get where we were going sure enough you'd find that he would take that trip uh, and as a child it just drove us crazy we we wanted to get where we were going to get out of the car but for him, and now for me, many years later, I too enjoy the journey. I can guarantee you, I don't think the Israelites were enjoying the journey. And these stages of moving and stopping and moving and stopping. Not having good water, having bitter water, and having to place the staff in it to, to sweeten it so that they could drink it. Not having food, and then receiving manna and squab. And now, not having water again. I think it's becoming very frustrating for these men, these women. The story is intended, I think, to be remembered and taught to future generations. I know in Sunday school as a little boy, I learned these stories. I don't remember that anybody ever told me these stories in order. It was older when I could read the Bible on my own that I sat and read about this journey. And I remember thinking how difficult this journey was. Dr. Derek Weber wrote, Maybe water isn't what this text is about. Maybe it's about the life of faith. Or maybe faith in God who is presented and who provides. Maybe it's not about water. Maybe it's about faith and a God who presents. Maybe so. Maybe all of us move through life in stages ourselves. Maybe the promised land that we're constantly looking for, I know that when we're talking to children, um, it's always interesting to me that the kids never seem to want to enjoy what they have. They always want to look forward to what's coming. And I noticed this past week that the um, the advertisements have started for, for Christmas. And I suspect it won't be very long until the kids are going to be really, really just hyped up over the Red Coat theology that's coming our way. 
Life is funny. When we're young, we want to drive. When we get to where we're driving, we want a job. When we get a job, we want a house. We want a car. We want to get married. We want to have children. Then we want the children to go away, get their own jobs. Then we want to retire. It's as though we're never quite really satisfied with where we are. We too are traveling in stages. And I believe that there's something missing in approaching life that way to where we're not, we're not actually enjoying the journey. I want to suggest to you that it's not these individual elements that are important, but rather the entire journey that the Israelites are taking. That journey is the, the thing which is really important. And I believe later, after the stories are written down and, and redacted and then placed into a, a book, um, into the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, I believe that that is presented to people so that, not that they would learn about this and this and this and this, but rather that they would learn about the provision of God, the love of God, the traveling of God with people, the watching of God over people, and the, the journey, the journey is as important if not more important than the individual things that happen. This week for you, I don't, I don't know what you've gone through. I've talked with some folks that have had a very difficult week and I've wanted to say I haven't, but I've wanted to say to a couple of them that life is filled with stages and I believe that those stages are there to help us to learn to trust God and to walk with God. Maybe all of us find ourselves oppressed and in need of freedom and deliverance at times. Maybe all of us find moments of being against the sea and being closed in by enemies on the backside and being pressed between something seemingly insurmountable and something that's stronger than us. Maybe all of us have moments where we need sustenance to fill us we feel empty. Maybe all of us thirst for things and find no possible relief around us. And maybe what we need to understand is that God is the only possibility that is constantly with us. Many have experienced hurt this year. I recently received a text that said, you know, 2020 has simply been too much the fear, the loss, the oppression, moving in stages from place to place brings with it its own challenges. Going off to school, some of our kids have gone to school and then come back and now are going back again. Some of our kids have gone off to, to join the Navy to do other things. Some of our friends here at this church have have moved to Florida or to Richmond or other places to take the next stage in their life. I, I read about some good friends of mine in Loudoun County this past week that I was unaware that they had moved uh, to Florida. And um, I've known a couple other folks that have. And uh, a close buddy of mine moved down into the Carolinas. We all have these stages that we go through. It may be important for us to remember that moving in stages, though it brings challenges, also brings us an opportunity at each of those stages to understand that God is with us. The Israelites understood their journey was going to a promised land. But I was thinking this past week and read somewhere, had they known that it was going to be a 40-year journey, they may not have ever left at all. Let me suggest to you that sometimes we go on journeys that if we knew how long they were going to take and we knew what we were going to go through, we probably would not begin those journeys at all. AA says that you need to take it day by day or moment by moment or decision by decision. You know, I just think that is incredibly great and wise advice. 
there is one with you on your journey through the wilderness. Uh, AA talks about there being this larger power. Uh, I was talking with a buddy of mine who uh, attends Alcoholics Anonymous regularly, and, and we were talking about what's going on, and we were talking about God being with this person, and they recounted this to me, you know, that, that God is a power which is greater than I am, and God brings me a presence and a hope that I can't receive on my own, and, and God only requires that I live day to day or moment to moment, not over a long period of time, and that when I break it into stages, it becomes more manageable. He didn't use the word stages, but as I was thinking about this, this pericope and this time of worship this morning, of looking at some of God's holy written word, um, I thought there may be something really good to, to looking at life and busting it down into stages. I, re I remember years ago someone said to me, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer, as you know, because you've heard it, is one bite at a time. And I think that's with life. We simply take on one moment at a time. And I would suggest that, that in the midst of whatever stage we're in, that we also would understand that God is with us in that stage, whatever hardship or whatever joy it may bring. We need to re remember that God is the one that knitted us together, that God is the one that placed us where we are, that God is the one that understands the great bigger picture. Some of us have been placed in situations which are so incredibly blessed that it's difficult to to even imagine how wonderful that is. And others of us have been placed in locations and in, in uh, situations in our life that are just simply untenable. Our world right now, our country, is being ripped at the fabric because of the, the difference in staging. I think it would behoove those of us that are really blessed to understand how blessed we are so that we can better understand those who are not blessed and can better understand the irritation of not being blessed. Some folks simply live looking for the day that's coming and they walk through the days that are here as though they don't exist. And I find that to be really, really troubling. This story, I think, is a story of survival. It's a story about learning of God's presence with us. It's a story about learning uh, uh, that, that we can pass on to our children and our children's children for generations to come. I was listening to another pastor this past week, and, and he said that it is the wilderness that is the place of blessing. I'll tell you, I really had to think about that, the wilderness being the place of blessing. But then as he talked for a while, I said, this is absolutely true. What we have been looking at over the past few weeks is that in the midst of the wilderness, even Jesus, as he walked through the wilderness, as hard as that was for those 40 days, he was blessed because he began to know himself better. The Israelites began to know themselves better. They began to know other people better. They began to know God better. They began to know creation better. They began to understand that all that existed was God's and under God's control. It's difficult to be in the wilderness. But the wilderness is a place of blessing. It doesn't feel that way, but it can become so. The wilderness is a place of testing, and testing doesn't feel good. Some of us have a, a, a real desire to be tested, and, and that's how we love to live our lives. And others of us hate testing and, and just simply would avoid it at all cost. But testing is, is ultimately a good thing because... It gives us the ability to, to take a look 
at what we have and what we don't have, what we think we have, and also to ultimately find that there is another one walking with us. I praise God for the journey, for the journey independently and corporately, the journey with the church. I gotta say that that it can become phenomenally frustrating to journey with other people who see the journey, who see the stages differently. But nonetheless, the journey is wonderful. And the walk, though challenging, can be wonderful too. This week, I'd love for you to think about what stage you're in. I'd love for you to look back. Look back at some of the stages that have come before. Maybe look ahead at some of the stages that are coming at you. And understand that you are not going through this stage alone. And you will not be going through any other stage in the future alone. God loves you beyond your wildest imagination. God will be with you. And ultimately, at some point in the future, we'll join together as the children of God, with God, to celebrate our journeys and to celebrate the love that God has for us. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, help us. Help us in the midst of our lives, wherever it will be. This, this, this overwhelming wet blanket of COVID that's on our lives has, has made things that are really small become really big. Help us. If we be by ourselves, or if it's just, just us and our spouse, or if we have children that we're trying to work with, Whatever our situation, whatever the stage that we're in, help us, Jesus, to experience your presence this week. As we go to prayer, help us to ask you, and we ask you to then come and touch us in a way that, that we know that you exist, so that we may find hope, love, joy, and peace for this and every moment of life. In your holy name we pray. I'd like for you to take a moment, if you would, and pray a blessing on the offerings that we've received via the internet, the mail, or the black box up by the door. Offer a blessing on those as we begin to, to send those monies out into the world. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for all that you give us and for the opportunity to share in bringing your kingdom. Bless these gifts, these tithes, these offerings, these sacrifices. Place your power upon them and send them into the world to bring your kingdom. In your holy name. Amen. May you have a wonderful week. Even if it's got terrible things in it, May you have a wonderful week. May you enjoy the stage that you're in. May you find the presence of God near you and around you. And may it bring joy. Go and do so. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.